It's Friday Eve. Good day. Thank you so much for hanging with us here on First Take. Skip Bayless, Molly Karam, Stephen A. is in the Big Apple. Gentlemen, what's the good word? What's the good morning? How y'all doing? Good. How are y'all doing? I'm doing all right. Good. Let's go. We got a lot to Let's talk go. about. Yeah. Yes, we do. Let's roll. All right. Let's do it. We're going to have Paxton Lynch joining us, draft prospect quarterback, and we'll get into all things draft with him. But first, the Eagles made waves Wednesday, making a trade with the Browns for the number two overall pick in this year's NFL draft. The Browns will get the Eagles' 2016 first round pick, number eight overall, and their third and fourth round picks this year. They also get the Eagles' 2017 first rounder and their 2018 second rounder. The Eagles will get the Browns' number two overall pick this year and their 2017 fourth round pick. Stephen A., did the Eagles give up too much? It appears so. Um, I, I, I listen, when you look at this deal on its face, the fact that the Browns get the number eight overall pick, a third and a fourth round pick, another first round pick in 2017, and another seventh or a second round pick in 2018, you're looking at the Eagles and you're asking the question, what drug are you sniffing? And the reason why you're asking that question is not because of what they went through to get the number two overall pick. It's because of the level of uncertainty evolving around the number two overall pick. If there was a Dan Marino, a John Elway, a Peyton Manning, or to the, in this day and age, uh, Andrew Luck, uh, who was a surefire top two overall pick, that would be entirely different. But there are a whole bunch of questions about Jared Goff. There are a whole bunch of questions about Carson Wentz. And when you look at it from that perspective and you understand the apprehension evolving around these two quarterbacks and whether or not either of them are worth a top two pick in the NFL draft, then it reeks of desperation that you would be willing to go this far in order to move up to the number two overall slot just so you could get your hands on, on one of them when there are so many question marks associated with them. When you combine that with the fact that we're talking about a Philadelphia Eagles squad that was number 28 overall, where only the New Orleans Saints and the New York Giants, if I recall correctly, um, were worse defensively than and they are, and they've done close to nothing to address their defensive liabilities. Uh, you know, coming into this this season, it just it just it, it's just a tad bit odd to say the least. I don't want to sit up there and excoriate the Philadelphia Eagles because this is not Chip Kelly. This is not a person in Howie Roseman uh, who believes that he's the be all and end all and the all knowing and what have you. And let's debunk conventional NFL wisdom and do away with common sense and just follow my path. That's not how he comes across to me. Doug Peterson clearly doesn't come across to me as the new coach of the Philadelphia Eagles as being that kind of individual. And I'm certainly not going to include Jeffrey Lurie, the owner, in that equation because I have profound respect for him. What I will say, however, is that if you're going to go through all of this, you got to let me know that Carson Wentz or Jared Goff these, bro these brothers are big time. They are no doubt bona fide, and they are clearly worthy of being a number two overall pick, and that's why we're moving up to get them. But the trepidation evolving around both quarterbacks, Skip, leave me reason to cause and pause, uh, leaves me cause to pause, and makes me sit back and say to myself, what the hell is going on here? Because it doesn't seem to make much sense to go through all of this to move up to the number two pick. I am with you. In fact, I'm so with you. Allow me to speak briefly as the Cowboy fan that I was born and raised to be. I'm pretty happy with this right now because I think this was a mind-blowing gamble by the Philadelphia Eagles that you covered for many years in the city of Philadelphia. I was dumbfounded. I was shocked. And yet I'm back to my premise here with Carson Wentz. I don't know what to make of him, so it's a little hard for me to condemn this deal. If you tell me Carson Wentz is going to be a 10 or 12 or 15 year Pro Bowl player, an elite quarterback, top five, go down as one of the all timers, I, I can't knock it. But I can't see it right now because I did not see him play. I've told you this before. North Dakota State, we've gone over and over. The, the, the mediocre at best competition. I'm trying to be nice to North Dakota State, but how do you know? How do you know for sure? Are you that sold on Carson Wentz? And my next question is, Philadelphia, 
Are you also that sold on Jared Goff? Because the Rams continue to give off signals that they're not completely sure, even though most people think they're leaning leaning toward Goff, and even though their GM, Les Snead, said yesterday, we do have a leader in the clubhouse, wouldn't indicate who that was, but we assume it's Jared Goff. Carson Wentz, just a day ago, was with the Rams. He was being interviewed one last time for reasons that escaped me. So is it possible? You know how this NFL works, Stephen A. You know how sheep think paranoid this league is. Is it possible that after the haul that they risked to go up to number two from eight to two, Philadelphia risked, is it possible the Rams sit back today and say, uh-oh, maybe they know something we don't know about Carson Wentz. Maybe we should think a little harder about Carson Wentz because they're clearly locked in on Carson Wentz. Are they going to be locked in on Jared Goff if, in fact, the Rams flip the script and take Wentz? I don't know. That's why this is, is an even more mind-blowing gamble to me. And then furthermore, I'm going to reiterate this. Picking any quarterback in the first round, history will tell you, is about a 50-50 proposition. About 50% of the time, this league swings and misses at first round quarterback picks. Think about that. That's mind blowing to me. I'm just gonna put it in one more perspective for you. We all agree the two greatest quarterbacks ever vying for one, 1A, one Joe Montana, Tom Brady. Joe Montana lasted, he was passed over until the third round of the draft. Tom Brady was passed over by team after team after team multiple times to the sixth round. Are you kidding me? And Philadelphia just bet the future to go up to number two on perhaps, possibly, probably a kid from North Dakota State. Are you sure he's going to turn into the next small school star, the next Terry Bradshaw from Louisiana Tech, or Phil Sims from Moorhead State, or maybe Joe Flacco from Delaware? I, I don't know. If they know something I don't know, God bless them. But I also hear that that we got Doug Peterson and Frank Reich and John D. Filippo, and they're all viewed around the league as quarterback makers. Now the three of them are together on that staff in Philadelphia. And people say, well, it won't matter which quarterback they get because they will be able to make him a star, the, the combined three brains. Really? I, I can just show you again and again where very good quarterback teachers took mediocre to, to bad quarterbacks in the first round, and they were just busts. They, they, you, they just couldn't, they couldn't fix them. They couldn't help them. So to me, this is, th this is the kind of gamble that can set you back for years unless you are dead set sure, and they can't even be dead set sure on which quarterback is going to be left for them at number two. So I say good luck, Philadelphia. Well, a couple of things. When you talk about Carson Wentz, they're talking about his size, even though I didn't see it from that footage. He didn't look that big to me. No, but they're he's saying a big his kid. size is there. They're saying his size is there, his athleticism is there. Okay. Uh, he's got a good, he's got a strong arms, et cetera, et cetera. With golf, they're talking about he played, um, you know, he has got small hands. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously with somebody like John Elway, whose hands measure like ten and one eighth, uh golf has a size nine hands, and a John Elway, he thinks that hand size on a quarterback is a very, very huge deal, assisting their ability to hold on to the football in case they get hit, their ability to throw passes with more accuracy in the eyes of some, uh, quarterback aficionados, etc., etc. I don't know what to make of all of this. All I'm saying is this. We clearly recognize that in all likelihood, Wentz and Golf are going to be one and two picked in this year's draft. By all accounts, both Cleveland uh, and, 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 and L.A., clearly need a quarterback okay so we understand that so since you understand that and you recognize that those are the two quarterbacks going to be taken I get that part what I don't get skip is that nobody is sitting back and saying these two are legit like they deserve to be mentioned in the same breath no. as surefire one or two picks historically mm -hmm. getting picked up in the NFL draft I don't hear those kind of laudables being attached to either quarterback. And if I don't hear that being attached to either quarterback, but you're going to give up literally five picks yep. if you're the Philadelphia Eagles in order to move up and get them, I'm like, my, this is the same Philadelphia Eagles franchise that was booed when they drafted Donovan McNabb. Yep, and Donovan did. McNabb yeah. coming out of Syracuse certainly had more stature. Than sure. any of these he guys. Did. I agree. So it's really, it's really hard to gauge right now. I just think that it, it, uh, at the end of the day, 
You gave up all of this for a question mark. I'm saying you need to be sure. And how could they possibly be sure, Skip, if they don't even know who LA's going to take? So that's where this comes. Yep, now, if you're you the go. number one, if this, if all of this is for the number one overall pick, yep. even though, even if you have questions, it's the number one overall pick, so you get to answer. The problem is LA's before you, and they got the same questions. So they may take the guy that you actually want. Unless you're here, if you're unless you're the Philadelphia Eagles, and you're here telling me that you hold both in high regard, yep. which nobody else has. Yep. No, nope, I agree. And what have I told you all year about Jared Goff? I watched him maybe five, six games this year. I tried to fall in love with him. I like his pedigree because his father played in in uh, the, in Major League Baseball. He was just sort of a journeyman catcher. But I, I like kids with with professional athlete bloodlines. And yet I tried to fall in love, and I could only fall in like, especially after that Utah game. And I know it was just one game, but he was just all five over the map, the, trying too too hard. Five interceptions, things, five interceptions. A little bit of a gunslinger. I'm just not. I'm not sure enough. And if you told me that one of these would be a Cam Newton, Andrew Luck, you know, I'd say, and I'm not even that big a Luck fan, but at least, you know, Jameis Winston, I am a big Jameis fan. If you told me that, that that's what you're going to get here, I'd say, okay, I cease and desist. But all I know is I'm only happy right now for the Cleveland Browns because that management I love. And that management just got the ammo to rebuild quickly. And I'm hoping that Robert Griffin III just got his opening to seize control of this job with picks and, and young stars starting to emerge around him and, and maybe, maybe keep this job going forward. He just might. I'm sure they'll draft a quarterback in the, what, second round? I don't know. Maybe they'll take Connor Cook. I have no idea. But they'll probably have a, a rookie quarterback to develop, but it won't be a, one or, a top one or two pick. We shall see. Yep. We the shall see. The other time the Eagles have had the second pick was in 99, and they took one Donovan McNabb.